afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Bell. It is Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. It is 60 seconds after the bell, which means it is time to go beyond the news, beyond the charts. Beyond the Bell, brought to you by our good friends over at the Blue Sky Trading Company for the clearest path to a live brokerage account. Live trading with Mike every day in the Discord in this fan-freaking-tastic show. You have no reason to get your content, get your accounts, get your brokerage accounts anywhere but the Blue Sky Trading Company. Check them out, bluesky.pro. All right, so pretty good day today, right? Like, And, and I, I always hesitate to use the words good and bad with the market today, right? Because so many people associate rightfully so right for those that aren't traders things like you know market move up good market move down bad because you know a lot of people have you know 401ks iris whatever you know whatever and so we as traders we and then we often make the mistake of referring to days where we make money as good and days where we lose money as bad no those days are either profitable days or not profitable days a good day in the market is when the market gives you certain opportunities and you take advantage of those opportunities. It doesn't always mean you make a ton of money, right? I've had days. Um, today was was a good day. I had a couple opportunities. I missed one early in the day. Uh, made it up. Not my greenest day. Green day. Not my greenest day in the world. But that's okay. Other than one opportunity I just missed this morning, there were a few opportunities, and and I took took advantage of them. Anytime it's this, guys the same. You hear me say all the time. Good a good trade is any trade where you take a valid setup according to your rules, according to your playbook. And you follow through on the trade. You enter without hesitation. You stop out where you should stop out or you take profit where you should profit. Anytime you do that, good trade. If you chase, you bag hold, you get it, you buy just because you think the market's going to go up. Maybe even you make a ton of money off that. That's a bad trade because you don't follow your playbooks or you're just kind of going about it however the heck you want to go about it. All right. So let's go ahead, guys. Let's take a look at the big picture and what happened in the market today. We're going to start today with the NQ on the four hour chart. So I had told you that I was fairly neutral into yesterday's price action, okay? I, obviously bearish coming in here. I was neutral to slightly bearish, all right? Personally, I, I what I thought was going to happen is I thought we were going to come out of this base, retest the bottom of this zone, and then head lower, okay? And instead we just decided to head lower. That's fine. Again, uh, guys, a market thesis is just some, is a guideline that we operate under. Okay, and obviously, pretty quick after the open today, my thesis changed to bearish. I remain right now, as we sit here on uh, 3.04 Central Time in on uh, Wednesday, April 17th, I remain bearish down to 17.500. That's the next big level uh, that I believe will act as support, but we'll see what happens. I do want to show you, though, the one key level I'm watching, and it's not in the NQ, it's in the ES. We are just a couple percent um, above 5,000. Okay, I've labeled this on my chart. Uh, you, I follow a bunch of different, you know, I, I don't subscribe to trading newsletters or anything like that, but I do look at like market levels, um, spot gamma, I'm a big fan of. Uh, a lot of, you know, people that look at things like the options chains and try to decipher what the big money is doing, either in options and futures, whatever the case may be. And pretty unanimously across the board, even among a lot of analysts and technical people who uh, maybe don't even agree on everything, 5,000 is, is sort of a major, as we're calling it, risk-off level, whereas institutions, funds, et cetera, may start to look at taking some or, or all of their risk off the table, which, of course, can lead to an acceleration at that point. Now, we're still 60 points away from that. Okay, that's a, that's a lot. Probably not. We don't test that. If we're going to test it, I don't know that it happens this week. But if and when we do test it, that is an area that very well could determine market direction for weeks, if not a couple of months to come. All right. So we are again, we are getting to the point we are we are moving into officially officially moving into correction territory. Right. Hold on. Let me pull back up. So, again, our highs all the way back up here. were close to 300 points off the highs in the ES. So we are we are moving towards correction territory. If we move down below here, we can potentially move into full-on correction 10% or more. Okay. 
that's healthy in the markets, right? Blown off a little steam off the top, it's very healthy for the markets. As day traders, honestly, we don't give two craps where the market is going to be even really tomorrow. We have our thesis, right? And we can operate under that thesis. But ultimately, we are just trying to figure out where the markets are going to be five minutes from now, 10 minutes from now. We just use, at least I personally use my top-down approach to help inform that particular uh, thesis, right? So... Again, what am I looking for going into the rest of the week? As far as the NQ goes, I remain bearish until, unless and until we test the $5,000 level. And it is healthy for the markets to go test major levels of support, right? And again, as day traders, we don't care. We just don't want the market to come down here and pin to this level for several weeks, which it actually is a distinct possibility. And we want to get down here and we either want the markets to break down strongly from there or bounce strongly off that level. We just don't want them hanging around um, that particular key level. Okay. Brian, nice to see you. T.O. Mike, TCGX, Mike James, James Holbert. I see all the bells. I appreciate you guys. Tiana, nice to see you. Apparently, we're giving stuff away today. I, I love when they tell me this stuff in advance. Um, so big thank you to uh, our friend Raj back at the home office in Davenport, Iowa, who will be, uh, he's posted the link. So guys, right up here. Oh, well, let me grab the chat. At the top of the chat, this gleam.io, we are apparently giving away two baseball caps today. Okay, so you can show your love and your blue sky pride off wherever you are. Okay, um, wear your blue sky cap on a, on a rainy day. I think that makes for a nice... Uh, ironic sort of ju juxtaposition, right? But as far as your trading, we hope uh, it's only blue skies from here on out. So with that in mind, I want to specifically get to our lesson of the day after I take a drink of water here. So I want to reemphasize something that we've talked about a couple of times on this show, okay? And I monitor... I monitor the Blue Blue Sky Discord. I'm not really in any other discords of other other prop firms. I, when I was checking them all out at the beginning, I some of those are a real mess. Blue Sky does a pretty good job of keeping theirs under control for the most part. Uh, but other than that, I you know I talk to clients. I I have you know I I am a part of several other trading discords that that maybe are education based or just groups of friends, et cetera, et cetera. And it seems like we're getting into a little bit of it. Every time we see strong movement, multi-day strong movement. And again, we'll go back to the, let me go back to the four hour chart of the NQ. Okay. So we've been in a mostly downward momentum since we got, we made new, new all time highs up here, but even it's really been since right here. Yeah, where's my drawing tools? There we go. Okay. Little bit of a move up here, and obviously a, a move up here. That's not really strong enough for me to consider that as much of a strong move up. But other than that, for the most part, the price action has been bearish. Fair, very bearish, in fact, right? Again, some places where the bears are taking profit if they're short or the bulls are, are that are trapped in uh, long positions are getting out. But by and large, we are in a bear market right now and, and I, bull and bear markets guys again get out of the if you are like me and you came up kind of studying the markets from a swing trading investment perspective right or god forbid you watch a lot of cnbc or fox business or bloomberg or any of that garbage television right you we get again we get like bull and bear market into our head is oh we're in a multi-year bull run that could lead to a multi-year this or that when i say bull and bear market i'm really talking about the last couple of weeks, right? Because we're day traders. Again, I said it before. I've said it a, a million times in the show. I'm going to continue to say it. When somebody asked me, you know, again, a lot of people in, within friend circles or, you know, secondary tertiary circles, whatever the case may be, or people that, uh, that, that I just casually know will ask me sometimes, oh, yeah, where are the market's going to be in six months? And I try to find new ways to answer that question that, that aren't like, because I, you know, people aren't looking at the markets the same way we are. So I'm not going to be condescending and you know, I'm a friendly dude, but like, I really want to look at them and say, I could give two 
pieces of horse turds where the market's going to be in six months. Now, of course, from a long term perspective, you know, I, I actively manage my IRA. So, um, you know, I do I am still well, actually I'm pretty I'm pretty net and I'm pretty delta neutral in that right now. But regardless, um, I we don't guys where the market where do you think the markets are going to go between now and and the election? I, I don't care. I just I just want them to move. Right. You give us good sustained movement up, good sustained movement down, sometimes in the same day. And I'm and I'm a happy little trader. Right. Momentum is what we want. It's it's stuff like this. Right. We talked about this on the show a couple of weeks back that just drives a lot of traders nuts. And actually, there were a few opportunities in here because this was a pretty decent range. It just doesn't look that big in comparison to the rest of the chart. Right. But this is what we don't want to see. Candle like that. Yeah, we love to see that run ups like this. Love to see that. Okay. But to bring this back to our lesson of the day, so many of you guys are um, looking at things either from a completely micro point of view, like a one minute chart, or from a completely macro point of view, like an hour or four hour chart, and making all of your decisions based on that. Now, on a future show, actually, that's a Good idea. I'll write that down when we're done here. Looking at kind of multi time frame analysis and, and some of the principles behind that's probably a good idea for a future lesson of the day. Although we really do that on this show every day. I show you the four hour, I show you the five minute, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But too many of you guys are still operating without setups. What do I mean by that? Okay. If I enter into a trade, okay, I have a series of, of, of trades that I am specifically uh, locked into RTT long, RTT short. Uh, VWAP tap long, VWAP tap short, uh, plus one standard deviation VWAP bounce, minus one standard deviation VWAP bounce, uh, plus and minus one standard deviation VWAP rejections. Don't get those as much anymore. I don't play those as much. And then I have a couple of trades that I call structure trades, which are basically breaking out or breaking back into areas of consolidation, areas of market structure. Okay. If I'm entering into a trade, if you were to sit next to me, and let's say you can't really see my screens, you can just... Um, you just you can see just when I enter and exit trades, you can see the orders pop up, right? And so you hear me click the mouse, you know, order filled. You should be able to ask me exactly at that moment, hey Matt, what what uh, what are you trading? And I'll just RTT long, VWAP tap short, structure trade breakout uh, above midway point, right? In in just a handful of words, I can tell you exactly what the trade is. And in theory, you should be able to pick up a playbook, whether it's handwritten, whether it's in Microsoft Word or you know, whatever the macro equivalent uh, pages, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you should be able to look at the exact rules, the entry criteria, the uh, the trigger, the trigger to get in, and the money management rules, the stop loss and the profit target. So many of you guys, and this, this always happens in trending markets, okay? And really, we've been in a trend, other than this box up here, Right, we've been in a fairly trending market for quite some time. We've had a lot of a lot of large runs up, a lot of large runs down, and what inevitably happens in those times is people just start to buy because they think it's going to go up, and sell because they think it's going to go down. And yes, that is the essence of trading, right? You know, buy what uh, buy low, sell high, okay, or sell low buy high right you, you, you it's whether you go oh the markets are going to go up i'm in the markets are going to go down I'm, I'm i'm in short without any structure or purpose to your trading and this is where newer traders can get in because you can say oh, i think it's going to go up boom i'm into a long trade and even if the trade goes for you immediately goes 10 12 handles in your direction right then everybody oh so do i, do I take profit here yeah i'm going to take profit here and then you inevitably end up leaving thousand dollars on the table or the trade goes again oh, get out here and it reverses and goes or <laughs> you you enter and the thing just goes completely against you and you're frozen and you don't know how to get out when you don't have a structure when you get into a trade when you don't have a set of rules these are the things that can happen okay so i'm gonna ask and be honest show of hands in the chat you can say yes one wave your hand whatever how many people entered or entered a trade today without a plan? So I'm going to give you guys just a second to respond to that. I don't care if you made money. I don't care if you lost money. You got into a trade without a plan. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for your honesty. 
All right. And, and, you know, it's no different than, than any other issue until you admit it's a problem. You can't, uh, you can't begin to work on it. Come on, Tiana, you know, better than that. You and I've worked together before. So, um, that is your guys' homework assignment. And I use gender neutral guys, guys, guys can be guys, guys and gals. So for you guys, you, that is your assignment going into this weekend to start to build out your playbooks. Now, sometimes you're halfway there already, right? I've worked with clients who will I'll say, well, what are you thinking with this trade? And they give me a really good answer. And usually it's just working on money management rules there. Okay, like a, if you have no idea where to set your stop loss, guys, on, on a trade, a good place to start is half to two-thirds of an ATR, if the ATR is big. So like five-minute ATR on the NQ is 30. I can't, I can't let you guys ever know a scenario where I'm going to take a 30-handle loss on the NQ. So in this case, my stop loss is usually going to be, and in general, it's usually in the 15 to 18, usually a little closer to 18 uh, handles. I usually don't go to 20, although occasionally I will. Almost never more than 20. Okay, so I have a defined risk before I get into every NQ trade. Okay, so if we go to the the ES here, what was our what's our what was our um, boy big ATRs today? So on the ES, usually I'm not going to accept a loss more than about four to five handles, not ticks, handles. So whole numbers. Okay, so that's a place to start. Now, if you're stopping out a lot one of two things is the problem. Either one, your stop is set way too tight. And, and we do that a lot, right? You're getting whipped out of trades. So if a lot of times you get whipped out of a trade, you, you stop out and then the trade runs in your direction. I mean, this happens more than half the time you stop out, then maybe adjust your stop. Or the other idea is your, your system just sucks. And that happens. Guys, I've spent hundreds of hours over the years learning, testing, developing strategies that I have never put a dollar of real money into. Welcome to the game of trading. You got to put in the work. You got to do the work. What if I just scalp with cattle, cattle pattern without plan all the time? Yuhan, I, I, again, I'm never going to say anything's impossible in this business. I've seen too much stuff over the years, but the statistics will tell you that if you don't have defined plans and defined stop losses, that you will eventually blow yourself out. Okay. Now, Every time I make this talk, guys, there's always one or two people. Well, you know, I, I guys, honest to God, I'm going to I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be a dick when I say this, but I'm going to say this anyway. If you're one of those people and you think you can be successful with this, you've got to prove it over multiple years. You want to message me in two years, say, hey, hey, hey you know, uh, hey, Jack Wagon, that uh, that talk you had about not having a plan. I haven't had a plan for two years. Now I'm a millionaire. All right. I'll take you out for a steak. I'll, I'll fly to your city you know, if it's in the U.S. I, I'm not. I haven't read my passport for a while. So if it's in the U.S., I'll fly to your city. I'll buy you a nice steak. Got a nice steak in the fridge waiting for me upstairs. That's why That's why I got steak on the mine right now. Okay, so it's a ribeye with a nice coffee rub. I can't wait. Anyway, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, or in this, that case, I think it's but I digest. But anyway, you've got to have a system. You've got to have a setup. And I'm going to continue to hammer on this in this show going forward. So, guys, uh, the link to sign up for the two baseball hats is up there. I am calling this the two-minute warning. You have two minutes to sign up for that. I don't know uh, what it, it, cause I'm sure somebody's asking about a giveaway tomorrow. I don't know specifically if and what Blue Sky is giving away tomorrow. I will give away a couple of course packs tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Come on back for that. So I'm, I'm teasing you now. What, so at least two course packs. Uh, I don't know what the what they'll what they'll give away if they're doing merch or accounts or all that, but they'll let me know. They'll let well if today's any indication, they'll let me know about ten minutes after the show starts. So, <laughs> but regardless, we're always grateful when the guys at Blue Sky come through on some merch, come through on some evals. But then again, you guys are just here for the knowledge, right? The giveaways are just a a, a complete bonus. Nobody ever shows up just for the giveaways, right? Everyone's here to just to just bask in some great market knowledge. I I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> Uh, Rich, I've blown out four accounts last two days trying to pick top bottom, but I, but I also hit more than 50% of profit targets on another two accounts. I'm feeling lucky today. All right. Well, so you've got, so we're talking about six accounts and you've blown out four of them. That's not winning trading, Rich. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean, again, don't mean to be harsh or a dick. I'm rooting for you. We're retail traders. We're all on the same side. We should all help each other out as much as possible, but that's not winning trading. 
And if you keep that up in those other two accounts, whether you graduate them to the next step, you're probably going to blow them out as well. Trying to pick the top and the bottom, especially in this market, is, I mean, guys, especially the picking the bottom, there's a reason they call it trying to catch a falling knife. Okay, I were, uh, I, my senior year of high school up through most of my freshman year of college, I worked part-time at a restaurant, right? Every, you know, everyone my age or, or, or older has the flipping burger story, right? We all flip burgers. Um, I flipped wings and stuff too. I worked at a wing joint for a while, but uh, you know, they, that is literally something they tell you if you've never worked in a kitchen. At some point, you're going to back into something, something, something sharp's going to go, don't try to catch it. Let it hit the ground. Then usually you're, you're supposed to go either wash it or put it in the sink to be washed later and get a, get a fresh knife, right? You go trying to catch that. It's nine times out of 10, it's going to cut you. I've literally seen somebody almost lose a finger doing that. Literally trying to catch a falling knife. So I have oh, a lot of blood. It was gross. Uh, we had to close the kitchen for 30 minutes and disinfect everything. We had a lot of really pissed off customers. Um, you know, nothing like having to shut down a kitchen to clean it because somebody's a dumbass. But, you know, again, there's a reason that that statement exists. There's a reason that's what it's called. Because you're going to reach for it. It's going to slice you to death. Okay? Yeah, Paul, I, pre Paul, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Paul. Anyway. So I do want to get to the mailbag, guys. We got a lot of people here, but he's active. First of all, I appreciate you guys fessing up to uh, trading without a plan. And that's okay. You, you know what? You If you're a newer trader who trades without a plan, guess what that makes you? Like every freaking buddy else that's ever traded, this guy included. Okay? I, I it, The only reason I know how stupid it is to do so many of these these things that I crack on you guys for is because I was stupid enough to do almost all of them. All right? I, I you know... I know it's it's a lot it's a big marketing gimmick in the education business. I did this, therefore you can too, right? And and I but it, that really is true in a lot of scenarios, right? I, I'm like I said, I consider myself. I've said this many times in the show. I consider myself a smart dude, but I'm very rarely the smartest dude in the room, ever, any room I walk into. Okay, and I, you know, <laughs> if I can do this, guys, you can do it. I really believe that. But it's going it, to, man, does it take the right kind of stubborn? You've heard me say it on this show before. Um, you have to be stubborn enough not to give up on it, but not stubborn enough so as not to make certain changes. You can't just do the same thing again and again and again. All right, guys. So we've got one minute. Or, uh, well, those, okay, signups are not closed. We will spin the wheel momentarily. I will take questions for the next couple of minutes. Uh, if anybody has any questions while I get the wheel O names loaded up. Get that all cleared off there. While I'm doing that, guys, if you don't have a que uh, question, I want to know were you red or green today? Should be a lot of green today. It was a it was a good movement day. Not a ton of false breakdowns. Yeah. So average true range, guys. First of all, James, thank you for putting that in there. I always simplify the explanation for ATR average true range by just being like the average length of a given look back period in candles. Usually it's 14. So if the in the NQ, like right, uh, just just at the close, the ATR was 30. That means the previous 14 candles, the average range, which, you know, range is just high minus low, uh, was about 30. OK, so that can help you again. If something has an, uh, like if the ATR five minute ATR is 30 and there's a candle that's 50 points wide or 50 points long, you know, that's a significant candle. That's something to pay attention to. Right. One green, one red break even green a bit red caught in a wick. OK, a little green. Today, I was in a profit of 700, but took another trade and lost the eval. Now, my target was already achieved. When I made 500, how to cope with this mentality and know when to leave. So uh, I've gotten that question a lot on this show, guys. Um, in general, I think it's I, I don't advocate for more experienced traders to set daily profit targets simply because, uh, you know, you may have a daily profit target of a thousand bucks. You hit that on your first trade. What are you not supposed to trade anymore? If you got two more beautiful setups. Quitting at a thousand couldn't make you miss a five thousand dollar debt. Now, for newer traders and for people that maybe have this problem, let's say this happens. You're consistent, consistently up several hundred dollars during the day. I mean, this happens to you more days than not. Let's say three out of five days, four out of five days, and you end up giving that back. Maybe considering shifting over to the sim. At, at that point, especially in an eval, guys, an eval with consistency rules, you know, like the 50K eval, you need to make $3,000 in profit. That's only six days of 500. 
right? So just hit, you know, you hit $500, boom, I'm done with that account for the day. I moved to SIM or I moved to another, another eval account or, or whatever the case may be, okay? And I'm going to protect those profits, okay? You, you, if you do that consistently, even if you have a couple of down days, you should be able to pass the eval in a couple of weeks, right? All right. Okay, so we have got the wheel of names loaded up. A lot of people for a not announced uh, giveaway. I appreciate that, guys. So we are spinning the wheel twice. Are you risking more than a set percentage of your last winning trade? Uh, that's a good question, and the answer to that is no. I don't. What happened on the last trade doesn't affect me on the next one. Okay, losing again. The only time th I need to check myself is if I don't follow my trading plan. If I follow the trading plan, I'm, I, I I'm not going to say I don't care if it's a winner or loser because I certainly care. Okay, but as long as I'm following my trading plan, following my setups, following my money management rules, I have enough of a track record. I'm going to be, I know I'm going to be successful. Maybe not in a given trade, maybe not even on a given day. I've had several red days this year. Thankfully, not a ton, but several. Okay, but I know that if I keep doing that same thing that I'm doing, you know, we, we, we're, you know, you, you run quite a bit. You know, if you're somebody who runs or bikes or do all that or lifts weights, you're going to have days that maybe don't go great in that training, right? But ultimately, if you're just making steady progress, you know, you're going to be successful long term. All right, guys. So two baseball hats. Let us spin the wheel O names. So again, guys, tomorrow I will be giving away some course packs. I don't know if blue if or what blue sky will be giving away. Oh, it looks like we got TCGX. Congratulations. You're here a lot. So I love to see my regulars winning. You have won a blue sky hat. Wear it loud. Wear it proud. Tag us on social media. And here is the second of two spins for a blue sky hat. Carlos Salazar, you have won a blue sky hat. Okay, uh, guys, again, always give us three business days, uno, dos, tres. Uh, three business days to reach out to you via the giveaways. And we we have a 100% record of, hit, of hitting our giveaways, guys. Just sometimes it takes a few days. You know, we're busy during the day. So uh, again, just give us three business days on that. No problem, Carlos. Don't thank me. Thank the wheel. Actually, thank Blue Sky for giving away the merch and thank the wheel for, for picking you. All right, guys. So tomorrow is giveaway Thursday. I'm giving away a couple of course packs. We'll see what Blue Sky gives away. Other than that, we are over the hump. Three days done. Two days left. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Beyond the Bell. Can't wait to see you back tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Good night.